Hey guys, I'm Jenna and I'm a resource consultant here at Children First. And I'm Chelsea and I'm a social worker at Children First. And today we're going to talk to you about anxious behaviors and um, what that can look like in our children and as well um, in adults. So I'm going to start with um, some pieces about anxiety in children. Okay, so what is anxiety? Um, so Anxiety Canada defines anxiety as one of the most common mental health concerns for children and adults. Um, and it can affect upwards of 20% of children and adolescents um, throughout their lifespan. So really, anxiety is normal. Um, everyone experiences anxiety from time to time. Uh, it alerts us to threats, protects us from danger, and helps us reach important goals. But when we experience anxiety, it triggers our fight, flight, and freeze response. Um, and that prepares our body to react. Uh, so for instance, our hearts beat a little faster uh, to pump blood to our muscles so that we have the energy to run away uh, um, or fight off danger if we have to. Without it, we would not survive. So we need a little bit of anxiety. Um, as a parent or caregiver, remember that you are the most important person in your child's life. Although it can be frustrating and challenging for the entire family to deal with an anxious child, your child needs a loving but encouraging parent and caregiver to help support them through this. Um, and the process of learning to cope and conquer their anxiety. It's important to validate how your child is feeling, not only when they present with anxious behaviors, but throughout their entire life. They need to know that we hear them and understand they are struggling, even though we will not always be able to make it go away. And that's okay. At times we may feel at a loss for how to support our child, uh, children or our child. It's important to be present with them during these really big emotions. So children are still learning to navigate the world and experiencing overwhelming emotions can be scary. We can best support our children by being with them in these moments, as this allows us to help them manage these emotions that are really big. We want to emphasize being brave. Uh, with children, it's helpful when uh, they're learning to cope with anxious behaviors. Uh, being brave is important. So this allows our children to learn a new coping strategy that they can use and apply not only um, to anxious behaviors or anxious feelings, but in all aspects of their daily life. Uh, we want to work together with our children on a plan, especially when you know a particularly challenging encounter or situation is coming up. Children with anxious behaviors often do better when they know what is expected of them. Uh, and we can support this by offering clear expectations and preparing for new situations with them. It's also important to remember to freeze your child's effort rather than their outcome, um, and that practice makes perfect. Practicing skills will allow your child to be prepared when they start to feel anxious about a situation. And now I just wanna talk about some strategies that you guys can try at home. Um, so some nice calming strategies and some things that you can use together. Uh, so yoga is an example of one. Uh, yoga is really easily accessible, especially through YouTube. You can find cosmic yoga, animal yoga, kids yoga, um, and that allows us to settle our minds and our bodies um, and has that grounding effect. You can kind of take it one level um, up and do meditation um, if your child's willing to sit for that, um, but yoga offers that support for us as well. Another really awesome thing that you can do um, with your child, you can make one, is um, a Buddha jar or a calm down jar, or maybe you've heard them um, called a uh, cow jar. Um, so these are really awesome. So in order to make these, you need a plastic container, some warm water, um, a binding agent, so maybe a little dish soap or clear glue if you have it, that would be awesome. Um, either glitter glue or loose glitter. Uh, you wanna mix it all together, uh, seal it, maybe tape the top so that you can't get it open again. And then the point is you wanna shake it. Shaking it is gonna um, allow us to calm down, but we wanna shake it to the point where we can watch the sparkles um, float from the very top to the very bottom. Focusing on that allows us to calm our mind and our body. Um, and this is a really nice one. So some other strategies, um, you can use some breathing techniques. I know breathing techniques are hard sometimes with little ones, um, but it helps if you imagine um, that you're smelling something and then maybe blowing something out. So you can take a pencil or a pen, finger, um, and maybe imagine that you're smelling a really beautiful flower. So you wanna breathe in and smell the flower, and then you wanna breathe out and blow out um, a birthday candle or a candle, so, and you, you're, um, you and your children can envision blowing out that candle, so. Um, step planning. Step planning is a really awesome um, technique to use. So what that does is it's breaking down our goal um, into little steps. Uh, so maybe the goal is I'm going to talk to a new friend today. We're going to break that goal down into little steps um, so that it's 
a little bit easier for your child to accomplish it. Um, we also want to know that um, we're not going to reach every step. So our children might show some resistance and it's okay to recognize that and we might be at one step a little bit longer than the next. Um, so those are some really nice pieces that you guys can do together at home. So I'm going to talk a little bit about um, parents and how parents can help support um, and maybe impacting their child's, child's feelings of anxiousness. Um, so when supporting a child with anxious feelings, we have to remember that parents are an important player in this process. Um, and as parents, in order to support a child with anxious feelings, we have to recognize some of our own. So maybe ask yourself some of these questions. Um, does my child share the same fears as me? Um, could I be transferring some of my own fears to my child? Is my child triggering anxiety in me? Um, and am I feeling supported enough to be able to manage these um, anxious behaviors? Supporting a child with anxious feelings can be a long and emotionally trying process. With that being said, it's important to look at the messages you may be sending your child about feelings of anxiousness in order to move this process along. It can be very difficult to shift a child's anxious feelings if their parent is also highly anxious. So sometimes children will mirror our own anxieties back to us. And although it may not be your intent to expose your child to your fears, um, these feelings can be communicated through words and through body language. Like Jenna said, adults like children have a fight, fright, freeze response. So think about what triggers anxiety and how that comes out in your body language. Are you one to tense up and freeze when confronted with a situation? Um, do you avoid situations or do you show other emotions such as anger or um, frustration when frightened? Likewise, um, when managing a child situation without success for a period of time, it can create some own feelings of frustration, exhaustion, and anxiety within you. Children pick up on these responses and the way that you manage these responses will model coping for your children. So how can we manage these responses? Um, Self-reflection is going to be your tool. So we need to self-reflect and parents need to prioritize their own emotional needs, which I know can be really difficult to hear when you have a little one with, who's struggling with their own emotional needs. But as flight attendants say, you must secure your own oxygen mask before assisting others. How can we assist our little ones when we're feeling depleted, right? So everyone has emotional cups, parents included. And when our emotional cups are empty, uh, we may notice um, people are quicker to anger or sadness. There may be more yelling or crying, um, or you may get that feeling of emotional exhaustion. And when our cups are empty, um, we're unable to positively cope with life stressors. So remember, because parents are children's biggest supporters when teaching emotional regulation strategies and coping, um, parents' emotional cups must be filled before they can help their children. We can't pour from empty cups. So research says 10 to 15 minutes a day seems to be good enough to keep our cups full um, to be able to manage life stressors. So try incorporating um, different strategies such as yoga, mindfulness meditation, um, sitting in nature, listening to music, um, or exercising into your daily routine. Um, it's important to utilize that support system so friends, family, um, and other support people when you need an ear to listen. And then just give yourself a break, right? Remember, being a caregiver is a difficult job and it's important to take care of yourself when taking care of your children. So Chelsea and I have a couple um, books that we wanted to share with you guys today, just some things that we often recommend and some of our favorites. Um, so this is one of my books. So The Invisible String, it's a really great book. Um, and you know what, you don't even have to use these books if you're experiencing or your little one's experiencing some anxious behaviors, they're great for any time. Um, and they're really awesome. Mm -hmm. um, this one's one of my favorites, Be Brave Little Penguin. Um, it's about this little penguin that's afraid to swim. Um, and it's a nice book that talks about um, normalizing the feelings of anxiousness, no matter what it is, um, and teaching the little kids to be brave. And the other one I have is um, Have You Filled Your Bucket Today, which is a nice um, synonym for that emotional cup that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so we just also wanted to say that, you know, given our current circumstances that everybody is experiencing right now, um, that it's important to know that this can expect um, this can um, affect anxious behaviors, especially in little ones, um, as environments are often changing and transitions are happening really quickly. So just be cognizant of that as you move through um, and be mindful of that. Our little ones um, are experiencing challenges right now too. So we appreciate you guys um, listening to what we have to say. Hope you were able to take some tips away and we look forward to um, seeing you again. Thanks. Bye.